If you think the assistance API is confusing, that's because it is. I don't even think OpenAI knows what they want to accomplish with this feature. I've read the docs, I've read the forms, I've experimented with it. Let's see if we can all better understand it together. We're gonna to go through that quick doc. We're gonna create an assistant API in the playground and we'll also try to build one in a custom app. Speaking of custom apps, I have a new course. A lot of the content doesn't quite fit on this channel, but I'm gonna teach you how to build your own custom AI app. So all of those cool AI ideas that you have in your head, this course is gonna teach you how to build them out, how to design it, how to find customers, and hopefully how to charge for your AI tool and make some money. Link is in the description below. So this is the official Assistance API documentation. First off, you can see that it is in beta. This is very important because a lot of this is not working how it's supposed to. This is a very early idea. I think they released it. They wanted to see what people could do with it, what they could build with it. And a lot of people are confused. There's not a lot of tutorials about this, and I think I understand why. So first off, they say the Assistance API allows you to build AI assistance within your own applications. I want you to think of the Assistance API like a custom GPT. So the GPT marketplace just launched. These are all the custom GPTs that have been created by the community. And if you go to my GPTs, this is what I have built. But let's say I wanted the club photography GPT in my app. Well, how would I call for it? How would I get this custom GPT to perform actions outside of chat GPT? This is where the assistance API comes in. You're creating a custom GPT within the API, and then you're calling for those custom instructions within your app. It's just another way to speed up the process so you don't have to create long custom instructions within each input prompt. So the assistance API currently supports three types of tools. Out of the box, they're giving us code interpreter, they're giving us retrieval, and they're giving us function calling. Now you already notice that there are major tools missing. Where is Dolly 3? They don't have it yet. Where is browsing the web? Not a possible option. Again, this is in beta. So very few tools are available with the assistance API. We all know what code interpreter is. It can run complex calculations. It can write out code. Retrieval is pretty easy too. So when you're creating a custom GPT, there is the knowledge section where you can upload files in the knowledge base and then have the custom GPT draw from those files, read that data, and then respond to the user's queries. So this is what retrieval is. You are storing a knowledge base on their server that your custom assistant can draw from. They are retrieving those files contents. And then there's function calling. I wanna leave this for now, but I'm gonna talk about it in a second. So stick with me here. And they also say that in the future, they plan to release more open AI built tools and also allow you to provide your own tools on their platform. They give you a way to test your assistance API right from the playground, which is nice if you don't know how to code. I'm not quite sure why you would do this rather than use a custom GPT within ChatGPT. The only thing I can think about is price. And I talked about that in a previous video. But for this feature specifically, it makes more sense to me to just use custom GPTs. It already has more tools. And then they say at the highest level, a typical integration of the assistance API has this following flow. So number one, you create an assistant in the API. Okay, you define its custom instructions and you pick the model. Just like a custom GPT, you write out the custom instructions, but this time you get to pick the model. Do you wanna go GPT-4 and have better outputs or GPT-3.5 turbo and save on costs? And then you can enable any of the tools that we mentioned before. Number two, you create a thread when a user starts a conversation. A thread is very easy to visualize. Think of it like a conversation. Each of these conversations I have on the left side of my chat GPT is its own thread. I hate that they're using different language in ChatGPT and then the API. I'm sure that's confusing a lot of people. It initially confused me, but then once I started reading about threads, it made perfect sense. So just think of it like a conversation. Number three, you add messages to the thread as the user asks questions. 
and it's just like a conversation. You write a message in the conversation and then the assistant responds with its output. And then number four, you run the assistant on the thread to trigger the response. Now this is an extra step in the normal chat completions workflow and I wonder why they have this. I think it's because of the tools. They need a way to trigger when the assistant is gonna use the appropriate tool. And then they reiterate again that it's in beta and they're actively working on adding more functionality. When you're making your API call outside of the playground, you do need to add one more header. This is a sample API call that I'm making in Bubble. You can see I have two headers. I have content-type, and that's application JSON, and then the authorization key, which is my secret key. So they want you to add a third one when you're using the assistance API, and that's open AI-beta, and then assistance equals version one. Now they're gonna walk us through the key steps to create and run an assistant that uses that tool code interpreter. They say that you can use the assistance playground to create and test your assistance. And if you hover on the left side here, this is the tab, the assistance tab. You can see that I have no assistance right now, but let's follow along with the document and create our own. So when I click create, this pop-up comes up on the right side and it looks eerily similar to the custom GPTs. So we have to give it a name. And in the example, they're creating an assistant that can solve math equations. So in order to do that, we're gonna need code interpreter. And I'm gonna go back to assistance, create, let's call this math tutor GPT. And the instructions will be the same as if this was a custom GPT. So let's expand this. I wrote a very simple prompt here. I go, task, you will solve math problems that the user gives you. If you don't know the answer, you will run Python code to figure it out and display it to the user. So I'm click back here. Now we get to choose the model. I'm pretty sure GPT 3.5 is not the best model for this use case. Anything with logic, anything with math, you need the most recent models. So I'm gonna go the GPT 4 Turbo. I'm gonna skip functions for now. We're gonna need code interpreter on and retrieval we don't need. We're not storing any custom knowledge base, but if we did, we would add the files right here. So clicking add will pop up your computer's files. And if you had any documents or anything, you could upload those. Okay, I'm gonna click save and exit this. And now the assistant tab looks a bit different. This is what we've created. We have math tutor GPT, a quick overview of the instructions, and now we're getting an ID. So when we're using the API outside of OpenAI Playground, we'll be able to call this specific assistant using this ID. If I wanna test it, I can go to the playground, and in the playground you can choose assistance or just the regular chat. We're gonna keep it on assistance. By default, the math tutor GPT is selected because we don't have any other ones. You can also create assistance within the playground like this. This is the same pop-up that you saw before, but now displayed on this page. Okay, let's go back to the math tutor GPT, and the thread, again, this is the conversation, we're gonna give it a math problem. Okay, I'm gonna paste this equation in. It's a solve for X equation, and we're gonna click run. You'll see that it creates a thread ID up top. We're giving it the run instructions, and then code interpreter is running for us. User message, run instruction, code interpreter, and then the assistance output. Now, I found this really funny when I was testing this feature out. When we click add functions, they give us two examples. One is get weather, and the other one is get stock price. For some of you, this might look very confusing. It's just a JSON body. I'm gonna click save. I'm gonna add the get stock price function to my custom GPT. Okay, let's call this stock picker GPT. For the instructions, I wrote task. You are to give the user a stock price and then tell them if they should buy or sell based on their risk tolerance. Okay, the model will be GPT-4 again. I'm gonna click save, and now let's test it out. So I'm gonna write Apple stock, I'll click run, and what's pretty cool is GPT-4 filled out the JSON body with the symbol of Apple. That is Apple's ticker, A-A-P-L, and then it tells me that the current stock price for Apple is required. So I write get stock price, 
and it tells me that the current price of Apple is $146.61. That's not even close. And what's funny about this is Assistant's API doesn't have web browsing features. So it's making this price up. I don't know why the example functions that they give us both require browsing the web. Get stock price and get weather. Two example functions that they're giving us to test the Assistant's API actually can't be used. I wish that they instead chose two examples that we could actually test because in a previous test, the stock picker GPT just flat out said, I can't browse the web, I can't give you the price. This was a bit different, this time it lied to me. So maybe we are getting somewhere. But basically what the function feature is doing is it's using your GPT model to fill out data in your JSON body. So in the get stock price example, we need the ticker symbol and the symbol would go right here we don't need the user to fill this out. We can get the GPT-4 model to fill out that ticker symbol as AAPL. But even so, I think there is a much easier way to do this. And I like to do this in Bubble. For those familiar with the channel, this is the free auto blogger template. Here is a little sneak peek of what's coming. But in the back end, I have a few functions. One of them is post to WordPress, specifically posting to your blog. And if I expand this API call, you can see a JSON body here. In a way, this is a function in my app. So if I was using this in the assistance API, the GPT-4 model would fill out the title, it would fill out the content, it would choose the slug, and we could even make it say draft or publish. But I don't think you have enough control when using the function feature in the assistance API. Because how I do it in Bubble is I create a backend workflow. I make sure that each thing we need in the function is its own step so that the GPT-4 model can't make a mistake. And you'll even see in their documentation that the function calling is known to have bugs. It makes mistakes in the JSON body. It escapes sequences with backslashes. And they also warn you that you should create confirmation flows so the models don't run haywire and post on behalf of users like when sending an email, making a blog post, or making a purchase. Imagine you created a function for eBay where the user had to make a bid on a product and then the model bid something outrageous. So by controlling each step, you tame the model to do what you want. In this example workflow in Autoblogger where we post a blog to WordPress, in the first step, we write a title. In the second step, we write the content to that title. And then our function, we fill out the title details, the result of step one, we fill out the content, that's the result of step two, and then we set the slug, which is the keyword you used to initially create the article. Bubble makes this so much easier than what OpenAI has right now. Again, if you wanna learn all about this stuff, how to create these in your own app, check out that course in the description. A few more things to note before we close this video out. First is about pricing. So it uses the basic API pricing dependent on your model, but a word of warning, when you use the assistance API, you delegate control over how many input tokens are passed to the model for any given run, right? Because the assistant API is creating your functions. It's looking through your threads. It's deciding which tools are needed and then using those tools. So you have no idea how much input it's gonna take you're leaving it up to the OpenAI models. The outputs are already random. You can kind of control that with max tokens, but now we're also trusting the assistant to make the right decision. If cost is an issue, especially if you have lots of users, this might be worth looking into. For 99% of us, this is not a problem. Next, there are many URLs that you are posting to. When you're creating your assistant, you're posting to this URL. When you're creating a thread, you're posting to this URL, and then you're saving that thread ID. Then when you're posting a message, you're appending that thread ID to the URL. When you're running the assistant, you're posting to the run URL. When you're checking the status of the run, because these tools take time to use, and because streaming is not available, you initially get a queue run status, and then completed when it's finished. And then finally you display the results. 
So lots of steps if you basically want to use code interpreter and retrieval. Now for the limitations. No streaming. What streaming is, is when you input something to a chat GPT, see how it's writing the response and you can watch it live. That's streaming. If you don't use streaming, you make the API call and then you have to wait till it's ready and then you get the full result all at once. No notifications for when the output is ready. That's why we have to pull. No Dolly 3 or browsing. No user messages with images which means no GPT-4 vision. They're going to address these problems in the coming weeks and hopefully support those functionalities in the future. What do you guys think of the Assistance API? How do you plan on using this? Please write me a comment below. And if you like this video, there's two more on the screen right now. YouTube knows what you like. They've put both videos suited for you. Come check them out. Peace.